Hello and welcome to some scratching around on the edge. Uh, and why scratching around? Because of this knife you see in front of you here. And this is the Civivi rifle. And that's rifle with two Fs. As in rifling through the pages of a book or rifling through someone else's drawer. Or never, 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 never do that. Right, so the Civivi rifle, liner lock flipper. Uh, as per usual, by the way, this is a Civivi design uh, knife. Uh, so, uh, as per usual, we'll go through materials as opposed to, by the way, a, a, a external outsourced designer. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, again, let me get back to where I was. Uh, as per usual, we'll go through materials, dimensions, and then I'll speak a little bit about the design and the attributes of this knife. So, materials. We have 14C28N, the Sandvik steel. Uh, the handle is micata. This specific one is uh, the what they call dark green micata. You also get it in brown olive. And then there's a version that has sandalwood. And then there's a carbon fiber version. Now the sandalwood uh, handled version and the carbon fiber version has a rubbed Damascus blade steel. Right. That's it. So the three micatas brown olive and this dark green and then a sandalwood and a carbon fiber got it um the screws liner lock uh, and clip are all stainless steel and then we have a ceramic pivot on this knife right dimensions we have a blade length of 88 millimeters or 3.46 inches blade thickness of three mils or 0.12 inches the handle thickness, let's get back that way, handle thickness is 12 millimeters or 0.47 inches and close length is 114.7 millimeters or 4.52 inches and then overall length is 202.7 millimeters or 7.98 inches. All right, let's check weight. He does feel very light in hand. Let's have a look at that. That down and line it up on the light as usual and crank it up. Right, we're on ounces. Let's have a look. See, uh, 3.4 ounces. Yeah, so light-ish. But for the size of knife, I think that is light. And then in grams, that is 96 grams. Yeah, so not too bad, especially for the size of the knife. It's got a, a nice little bit of weight to it, I suppose. Uh, right, so that is the materials, dimensions, and weight out of the way. Um, so let's speak a little bit about this design. So we have a drop point blade, quite a deep sweeping belly. And then you can clearly see we've got this big triangular cutout uh, in the Ricasso. Nice little plunge line that comes down there into a decently sized sharpening choil. And while we're speaking about sharpening, the edge on this knife is again one of those Civivi slash Wii type edges that is very, very neatly done. Uh, a superb factory edge and, and really sharp out of the box as well. But uh, uniform, matches both sides, etc. Uh, right, rest of the blade, we've got like a skeletonized, almost like a, a skeletonized hammer um, on, a, on a hammer fire firearm. A little skeletonized flipper that looks very attractive, very handsome. And then we've got jumping running around on that flipper. And then we've got jumping on the back of the blade there as well. So getting hold of the, the knife, putting your thumb on the back of the blade, you get nice purchase over there. There's no uh, forward finger tool to choke up, but you can see the distance, my hand to the blade. You actually, with the design of this knife, you do get your finger quite close to the blade anyway. It's not one of those that pushes your finger further away from the blade. Um, and then that jumping on that uh, flipper tab actually really helps to get it flipped open. And you have a look here to see yeah, light switch is very nice. Let's see if it's uh, push buttons. Yeah, push buttons nicely as well. So either way, really smooth. Blade flies out. You can hear that nice snick as it opens. Nice, very nice. And then we might as well look at detent while we're doing that. 
yeah good detent as well blade centering is spot on um but you uh, you know speaking about that hole that i showed you just now that should indicate to you that it can oh boy let's see <laughs> <laughs> I'd never get this right the first time on camera, but you can thumb flick him. Oh, and that was terrible. Let's just see if we can get a, a nice, good, solid thumb flick here. If I get ah, still soft. I'm going to try that again later. But his spidey flicks beautifully, and you can see that really does fly out, and that's that's a lot of fun. So, uh, one of those knives with good uh, fidget factor and to it oh that's terrible uh we'll give it up we'll give it up and just move on now um handle very very simple design handle you know so very clean lines there's no nothing fussy no little added bits of detail to it just a nicely beveled uh, and then rounded so it's first beveled and then rounded around the edge so yeah, no little sharp edges, no hot spots. You can see size there, decently sized knife. My medium sized hands comfortably fits on there. Slightly bigger hands, you're still going to fit on, and then those really big hands, <laughs> your back finger. But I, I suppose that might happen on every knife, those with those sort of hands. Um, the, the back finger would all the. Uh, anyway, let's just move on. You know what I'm saying. Um, so we've got. Um, Makata, the Makata scale is then uh, matched in the backspacer. So we've got a Makata backspacer in there. And then you can see that that's cut back a little bit into uh, the, the knife. And then one little standoff at the back there. And that standoff acts as your attachment for a lanyard. Uh, but again, really nicely finished off all around there. Everything fit and finish really good. Uh, the handle, we've got this slight little cutback uh, to give you access to the lock. Oh, there's a little bit of jimping on the lock there as well, on that stainless steel lock. Nice lock up. And right, let's go. Uh, pocket clip. So we've got tip up pocket carry, and it is deep carry. It's one of those looper rounds, and you can see it sits right near the top. It's also one of those clips that's slightly mounted in the angle, so you know it'll probably push the the knife over a little bit so if that's in your right hand in your right pocket I should say it will kind of push it out of the way of, of everything anything else in your pocket so yeah nice that and it is reversible as you can see so the top screw in each case on either side the top screw in the way that I'm handling it uh, so in other words the screw closest to that edge is shared for keeping the knife together and for uh, holding the pocket clip on. The pocket clip is not countersunk, um, but there seems to be uh, enough space on the inside there that that's not going to hang up really on anything and a nice springy and skeletonized pocket clip. And then speaking of skeletonizing, this knife has got quite a bit of skeletonizing on the inside. You might even pick it up there without the use of a torch, but let me get some light on this. So maybe you can see it a bit better. You can see it in there. So. Quite a lot of material has been machined out, nicely machined, these little sort of tablet pull shaped, um, how about that, now I'm going to show it to you, now that I've shown it to myself, um, <laughs> so there you can see sort of tablet shaped little cutouts on the inside, they're bean shaped, There's a, maybe that's a better description of it, bean shaped little cutouts, but quite a lot of material removed there, and then uh on the so that that actually we were looking at there was the lock side and then on the show side it's bigger uh, portions of material bigger cutouts into that liner to lighten but but nicely done nicely finished off inside there um right what else is there to say about the knife um i think i've pretty much gone through everything that I need to do. I am really tempted to try that thumb flick again. Uh, should I? Should I see if I can completely mess up? Yeah, no, it's not going to get any better than that, it seems. Um, some days it just <laughs> doesn't work for you. I will stop now. Uh, nevertheless, you can thumb, spidey, and uh, flipper tab this, uh, this knife. Uh, so, yeah, all in all, really nice. A nice, neat design. Good, this, uh, good choice, I think, for EDC and its simple lines and comfortable to hold and quite a, a thinnish knife. 
uh, and and beautifully made as well. Uh, again, from Civivi, uh, you know, one just expects this from Civivi and we nowadays. Right, I've got to thank once again Blades and Triggers for providing this knife uh, to me to mess around with for a few days, form an opinion. I really appreciate uh, their support. Please go check out their website. Uh, once again, this is one of the knives I don't have a price for right now. Um, but go and check it out on their website. I'm sure by the time this video goes up, they will have the pricing up. Um, so that's BNT Online. Go check them out there. Nice range of knives. And, uh, and you know, people are interested in the dollar price, uh, you know, the, the likes of uh, Blade HQ and, and so on. You'll find it there. Uh, and any knife shop in your own country, of course, I suppose. I may as well add that as well. Right, so uh, that out of the way, let's check uh, size comparisons. So I've got my usuals here, and we'll flip through them very quickly. Uh, the Benchmade Mini Barrage, give you a sense of that. Uh, the Spyderco Manix 2. And these are knives that I just, you know, have been out there for a while and I think people are probably pretty familiar with, right? Similarish sort of size. Um, yeah, the Civivi uh, rifle is lighter. Um, and then the Metford Slim Midi, I think very, very similarly sized. So any of those knives uh, that I've shown, I expect for the, the Benchmade Mini Barrage, I suppose is a little bit smaller, but the other two, the Spyderco and the uh, Metford Slim Midi are very, very similarly sized. So if you're comfortable with carrying that kind of size knife, yeah, it gives you a sense that uh, you will be comfortable carrying this as well. And then I just brought, because it's I suppose sort of similar construction and sort of uh, maybe a little bit less in terms of pricing. Um, but uh, just something different uh, to show the rake. Um, and there's a thousand ways probably of pronouncing that name. Rake is the way I've chosen to go on. And this is the rake Hussar, but also G10, also stainless steel liner lock. And it's also been skeletonized inside. So a little bit of a longer knife um, and, a bit, and a bit fatter as well. But uh, yeah, it just gives you a sense. I mean, you might know that knife. And you can see it is a little bit rounder and a bit heavier as well on the rake. Cousin, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything that I really need to on this knife. But a, a nice basic knife, a good choice for EDC, I think. Uh, probably one of those knives that you won't feel too sorry for, um, you know, using for heavy use. And that probably makes it the ideal knife for EDC rather than your expensive Medford or whatever else it may be. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I like that. Nice, tidy design and really good action. Despite my fumbling around with my thumb flick, uh, it is a very, very, very smooth action on that knife if you feel it it's there's no grittiness or anything on that it's one of those seriously it will be this is a good fidget toy guys i think that's it i think that's all i have for you today uh, once again i really appreciate you popping in and i would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit that bell icon because i would love you to join me more often and other than that you go well and god bless